Right, in this video, we're going to construct a regular pentagon, so it's a five-sided polygon with uh, five sides that are all the same length and five congruent interior angles. I think a regular pentagon is kind of an interesting shape. Uh, there's lots of golden ratio involved there, and um, say that's just interesting. Plus, it's a little, I think, a slightly more mysterious construction, which seems appropriate because the uh, golden ratio is a slightly more mysterious number. All right, so let's start. First, we're going to make a circle. This is the circle that our polygon is going to be inside of. We need to create a crosshairs in the middle of it. So I'm going to start by drawing a line through here. We'll mark our point over here. And now we're going to do a perpendicular bisector of CB, which we've done before. I'll make them two big circles right here. I'm going to mark the points up here, down here, and we'll connect them with a line here and here. All right. So uh, I got my perpendicular. Now I'm going to hide these extras because I don't need these anymore. I've got my, my crosshairs. I don't need all this extra stuff. We're actually going to hide that. And I actually don't need this segment here. We're going to hide that. Okay. Don't need point E. Right. So we're trying to keep things clean because this construction will get really messy really fast. Next, I need a perpendicular bisector of AB. That's going to be up a quarter of the distance all the way across the circle. So we'll do that. And I'll have to go like that. Now notice if I go just as a, if I go like this, see how I'm just making that same circle again? I don't need the second circle. All right, so point, point, and put our line in between them here. Okay. And we're going to mark the midpoint of AB, because what we really just wanted was the midpoint there. And now, Let's go do some hiding. I want all this extra stuff. I need this line. Okay, I don't need point F. I don't need point G. I don't need this line. This segment here. I don't need that stuff. I just need point H. Okay. And the only reason I need point H is to make a small circle right here. So I'm going to draw a small circle right here. Okay. And at this point, I don't even need point H anymore. We're done with that. I'm trying to keep things clean. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I am going to draw a line. Oh, wait. Shoot. I didn't need point H. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. I am going to draw... Shoot. My mind is a sloppy mess today. You know what? Let me take a sip of coffee here. Okay. I'm going to draw a line that goes from I through H. It cuts through the circle. I'm going to mark the points with the circle intersects where, the, where that line intersects the circle so it'll be up here and down here i'm then going to draw a um an arc well it's going to be a, a full circle because i can't draw just simple arcs with this tool i'm going to draw a circle that has a center at i and passes through the first point of intersection and then center at i and draws through the second point of intersection and the places where those two circles intersect this original circle are going to be four of the five vertices of my um, pentagon. And the fifth one's going to be up here at the top. It's a little complicated. So let's see here. First, we're going to draw our line through here. And now I'm going to mark the points of intersection of the line in the small circle. And immediately I'm going to start doing some cleanup here. Okay? Don't need the line anymore. I'm done with the circle now. And now don't now I don't need point H. Don't need this segment. Okay. All I need is point J and point K, which were originally the places where the line that passed through I in the center of the circle intersected with that small circle. Now, we're going to draw a circle that has center I, goes through J, and center I, and goes through K. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and mark the places where that circle intersects our original circle. I'm just going to use our intersect tool here to go click. I just mark that circle and that circle and see how the two points of intersection just pop up. And then down here, see how my two points of intersection just pop up there. Now let's go back and clean up a little bit again. Lots of cleanup to do as we go along. Take away these two circles. Point C, I should have gotten rid of that a while ago. I now no longer need J and K. I actually don't need point I anymore. We're done with that. And now, if you kind of eyeball it, you can see this is going to be the bottom half of our pentagon, the bottom 
portion of our pentagon, really. And I'm going to place one point right at the top. That's going to be the last part of our pentagon. Now we're ready to just put it together. One, two, three, four, five sides, and we're done. There it is. We're not quite done, actually. I just want to mark the side lengths and the angles. So let's mark the side lengths. I'm just going to click on the actual sides themselves. We don't get the, the side names that way, but I get the measurements, and that's the important part. And it's a little quicker and easier. So currently, you see they're all 1.34 units long. And if I go ahead and grab my point B on the circle and drag it out, they all get 1.28, 1.85, all get larger and smaller, but all the same. They're all congruent to each other. Next, we're going to go back to our angle tool, and I'll mark the angles. Okay. That's a 108 degree angle. 108, 108, 108, and the last one, 108. Let's take a look, uh, move them all out here so you can see them all. All right. Now again, if I grab point B on the circle, this uh, pentagon is inscribed. That's the word for it, inscribed in the circle. So if I make it Make the circle bigger or smaller, the pentagon gets bigger or smaller, and the side lengths always stay the same. Or the side lengths change, but they're all the same as each other. And the interior angles, no matter what I do, they always stay the same. Okay. Let me kind of clean up a little bit more here just to be, kind of take away these extra lines. Yeah. I mean, they're not a huge deal, but let's just clean up a little bit here. All right. So again, when you're finished with your pentagon, I should have point A at the center of the circle, point B on the outside of the circle, and I should be able to move either one of those. And the angles should all stay the same, and the um, side lengths should all match each other, but grow and shrink with the circle. All right, good luck with that. This is a little more difficult.